Good morning, good morning, everybody. All right, so it's New Year's Eve. Um, let me see, make sure there's no echo here. I think we're good. Yep. How is everybody today? So we got a half day today. Honestly, I'm surprised the market is even open right now. I don't know if we're going to get Mitch here or not. Uh, what's up, Susan? Good morning, Danny, Shirley, Matthew, uh, AR, uh, Awesome, John, Brian, Patty, Mark, Mark. It's 45 minutes where you are. Where are you at, man? Because right now it's early in the morning, New Year's Eve. It's not going to be New Year's for like 24 hours. It's not going to be New Year's for like 18 hours. 19 hours or 17 hours uh, but good morning everybody Missouri Marty pun bill mess oh you're in Australia well happy new year brother uh, Troy to know if a stock is tradable you just go to the trade manager if you're wondering around SFET, it's not tradable. SFET, I can look it up here. One that is tradable will say Y right here. One that isn't will say nothing or N, you know. So uh, let's see what this one will show. APHA is tradable. ACB is tradable. ABIL is not tradable. You can see the N here. SFET isn't even in their system, so it's not tradable. Uh, WATT, OPK. So a few that aren't tradable this morning. Let's see. Appreciate it, Troy. Uh, we can't. I can't buy in pre-market, Matthew. So, like, I would if I could, but I can't. It just doesn't let me. Yeah, like I thought today would be, though. Today's pretty slow. I mean, SFAT is moving some, but... Everything else is kind of dull. What's up, Adels? You're in GE? What direction? Yeah, I got the kid running around me too. Watch, you want to say hey? Hey buddy, come here. Come here really, really quick, come here. You want to say hey? Say hey, everybody. Say it right into this thing. That's a microphone. Come here. You're not going to do it? What? He just refused and ran off. I guess that's what I get. Come on, bud. Come here. Come 
Here, you gotta say hey. Right there into that microphone. You see that? The big blue thing. Or that big round thing's a microphone. Say hi. Say my name's Jack. You don't want to tell them your name? Is your name Pineapple? No, that's not your name. Tell them your name. Jackie. What is it? I can't hear it. I said Jackie. That's your name? Yeah, Jackie. Okay. Jackie. His name's Jackie. It's not Jack. It's Jackie. Um... Yeah, man, I gotta call him the wrong name just to get him to talk. You know, I gotta ask him if his name is Pineapple just to get him to talk. Should be easier than that. Yeah, his name's his name's Jack. We call him Jackie. Uh, AR, so AR had a question. Let me see if I can answer it. He says, uh, my man, quick question. Why do people say you can't day trade under 25K? TD Ameritrade lets you trade often as long as it's a cash account and not margin. Um, so I think the main reason is because like with, with, a, with a no PDT broker, with a broker that allows you to trade unlimited amounts, with no PDT rule. What they really mean by that is that they mean a broker that will allow you to trade unlimited day trades, but also not have a T2 rule. Uh, so the T2 rule means transaction plus two days. And it means that every trade you get into, it's going to take two days for the funds that you used in that trade to settle. Um, and so, you know, even if you have 25K, if you're trading active enough, your funds aren't going to settle and you're not going and if you're using enough of your buying power, <clears throat> you're still not going to be able to day trade because you're going to have to wait 2 days each time you trade for your funds to settle. Uh now like with no PDT brokers, uh that's not a big of a deal and and a lot of times like with SureTrader and with Tefs and you know, with no PDT brokers, your funds will settle immediately into your account. So you don't have to wait for the T2 rule and you don't have to wait for your funds to settle. Um, but even if you have a cash account with uh, less than 25K, you're still gonna have to wait for your funds to settle in something like TD Ameritrade. And that could be, um, that could be frustrating. And so it all just depends, you know. Um, some brokers follow that rule, like some brokers will allow you, some US brokers will still allow you to day trade with less than 25K if you only have a cash account, but it's very subjective and each one is different, you know. Yeah, no worries. But yeah, that's really why. I mean, even with even if you can't, even if the broker says, yeah, you can day trade with, you know, with no PDT rule, you know, most of the time you're still gonna have to follow the T2 rule, and so it's gonna be really hard to actively, like, really actively day trade anyway, because you're gonna have to wait for your funds to settle after each trade. Now, there's certain brokers that let you do that, like Robinhood will let you uh, trade uh, more than three times a week with a certain like account on Robinhood. Uh, but you're going to have to follow the T2 rule or you can only trade three times a week and they just automatically settle your trades after each one. And so there's pros and cons to each. Uh, I tend to prefer, like my funds to settle after each trade, but it all depends, you know. And if you if you space it out, then it doesn't matter anyway because like say if you use smaller sizing and try to save the equity in your account 
for each trade you get into, then the T2 rule doesn't matter, but most traders don't do that. Yeah, plus you can't short with a cash account. You have to have a margin account to short. And so, I mean, there's a bunch of different benefits to it. EYPT. Yeah, I looked at OPK earlier. Kind of a dull day. I mean, SFET doesn't look bad. Oh, we got Mitch here. Sorry, Mitch. Just now saw you in here, bro. I went to bed kind of late last night, man, so I'm probably a little uh, groggy this morning, Mitch. Hold on. Let me make you... Yo, yo. What's up, man? Sorry, brother. What's up? Uh, hold on, let me uh, change settings. You're not coming through. <clears throat> You're not coming through on the... Uh, hold on. There we go. That should work. All right, talk. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, there you go. All right, it's working. Let's do this. Starting to feel a little better. Fucking the flu. That sucks, man. I hate the flu. I haven't had the flu, though, in like seven years. Oh, I only get sick like once a year and I kind of jinx myself. Like last week I was like, oh man, I'm going to get through the year. Yeah, man. I mean, I wish I could say the same, but I have two kids that go to two different schools. And so like, I'm getting sick like roughly every two weeks here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But my immunity yeah, system's on point now, you know? Yeah. I think it was, I used to work with kids for a long time. Uh, do after after school counselor. So they, I, I built up that immune system over years. Oh yeah. Oh, happy birthday, John O. Happy late birthday, brother. I actually thought about you that day. I was like, today is John O's birthday. I really did. But happy oh. late birthday, man. Oh, that sucks, man. I hate to hear that. No one likes to be sick on their birthday. Never any fun, man. I've had some pretty bad birthdays over the years. You always have those those really memorable, terrible birthdays. But um. That's right, man. <laughs> oh man, last year, uh, that stock went crazy. That uh, was it. Um, that stock that went to like a hundred and something. Eventually got hit. We got uh, right on my birthday. Dries. No, nah, not dries. The other one, the the LFIN? beverage. LFIN. Yeah, that one. LFIN. I watched that thing go up like it was a freaking rocket. <laughs> Yeah, LFIN, man. That one's notorious. That was notorious for getting halted and then just never resuming for like, for like what, like a month? And then it opened up at, at like what, like six bucks? It closed at like 30 something and then it opened up at six and now it's on the OTC market. I can at least say I don't expect another birthday to be that great of an opportunity. Yeah, man. <laughs> that was a chance right there to take a birthday <laughs> swing from a lifetime. Right. <laughs> Willing that stuff into the universe, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, I, luckily, I never I, I never got caught in it. You know, you'll notice these very similar patterns with some of these stocks, right? Like LFIN was just one of those moves that got pumped up too much. Like, look at it. It's at 50 cents now. Yeah. Like, look at the daily chart, though. Like, this is the daily chart on this thing. Oh, uh, man. Like, let me put it the three-year chart up. You know, three-year chart opened up at $1.67 <laughs> $1. or so. Went up to 142. Within a day, went from 142 back down to 64. Uh, went all the way back down to 30s, back up to 60s, or back up to 70s. That's where it got halted. Or no, back up to 30s. That's where it got halted. Opened Can up. You imagine bed. if there's still somebody short. <laughs> people probably are. I'm sure some people just got really frustrated with the stock and just never traded oh. again. Yeah, I mean, it, it like closed down for a little while. I had uh, some uh, investigations for a little while. 
it was locked up. Do I sell my trade idea settings? Uh, no. Yeah, you can get it if you uh, join our class. We don't mind sending you the. Uh, we ca we kind of have it on a cloud. Yeah. Cloud base. We can send it to you. Yeah, but I mean, even if you don't want to join our classes, I'm not trying to be. Uh... Yeah, we're not trying to really sell it. Really, right. it's just more along. It's it's something that everyone can have. We've just spent the time to actually develop our scanners and our alerts. Um, yeah, these. I mean, these are. If you see these gappers, right? These are presets and trade ideas. So, like, I never had to create these. I could just go to file and uh, just find gappers and just like set these scans here. So it's like I didn't create these. These were like automatically set. You know, the only ones I really created were breaking out on volume. Um, what was the other ones, man? We created a few of them, but hold on. <laughs> oh class is thirty dollars yeah just go to the website yeah okay, just check out the site that's the best way that way you understand what it brings i mean well, for you yeah i mean it's 30 bucks but it's a lot of content like right now we got like 50 hours of content you know like like backlogs of content right and then uh anything after that like you get 20 <laughs> live hours on top of all the backlog and so it's a pretty good deal it's like 50 cents a class if you take in all the 50 cents per hour of class you know and so it's pretty cheap i think pretty cheap man there ain't there ain't nothing out there right i mean it's pretty cheap i mean that's all find me something better i mean we're probably me we always get I, hate. i'd probably join it <laughs> right i mean we always get hate but it's literally like if you if you take into consideration like the backlog of like 50 classes that we already have plus the 20 live classes it's like really cheap it's like 50 cents a class yes yeah. scroll up your gappers brother there you go <laughs> i got you all right all right um so my top stocks for today are going to be apha and followed by mu another stock on my watch list is wpm has been stuck in some consolidation after a huge gap up. Going to keep that one on watch. Um, of course, uh, plays that we've been playing consistently like Tiva, AMD, and Cron, NBEV. We'll keep those on watch. Yeah. Uh, my main play is MU. As I'm going to be watching the overall market, I'm expecting a bounce in the overall market. Um, the, the levels that I can see getting pushed towards are going to be that 50% retracement, which would take it to that 258, 259 area. I can see it bounce, um, holding that resistance 260 and then really swinging right back down. Yeah. Look at, uh, look at VTVG <coughs> here, man. I, I didn't even notice this one. So appreciate the call out brother. Whoever just did that. I can't remember, but VT, VT. yeah, VTVT, man, look at that thing go. Yeah, man. I mean, it's it's very unlikely that it's actually tradable, but like, look oh, at that thing go. It ain't. Yeah, I mean, I figured. I know trade net well. I know trade net pretty well at this point. To like, I know when, I know when things are gonna be tradable and when things are not. You know, I can predict that fairly accurately. I always mess with them when I talk to them. I'm like, yo, make them more, more tradable, more, more. Do it. <laughs> they ask me anything. That's the first thing I tell them. I'm like, yep. Can I trade more stocks? Right. Well, that's what we really need. I mean, that's the biggest that's flaw. It. That's the biggest flaw. Like, let's be real. I mean, it depends, right? Like we were talking about it yesterday. Like that's the biggest flaw is that certain penny stocks, like it, it kind of, uh, a certain niche of trading isn't included, which is like penny stock traders. And so I think it's know. like, it's one of those things where, um, it's usually brand new stocks and it's kind of their risk management team just saying that they don't want to be a part of that. Right. Which is understandable. Like I get it, you know, I mean, they all have risk management teams. They got to oh, keep making sure. money at the end of the day. Yeah, for sure. Like think about it. Like sure. Trader used to restrict any, uh, trading like before two thirty, or like before what three thirty every day. <laughs> Like they would restrict your margin before three thirty. So like that's just kind of what happens. Uh, you stock trade used to restrict certain stocks as well. 
Yeah. So, like that's it's normal. It's pretty normal. Sure Trader does the worst ones, the ones in the middle of the day. Out of nowhere, it's just restricted. Yeah. yeah. At least we don't get that from trade net. We don't get no middle in the day kind of taken off from tradable. What do you mean by not tradable? I'm going to get to your comment in just a second, Clay. Uh, but what we mean by not tradable is that our platform will not allow us to trade it. Right? So, like, you get certain stocks that, like, if you search for them, like, here's an example. Uh, I can search for VTVT. And under is tradable, it says no. It has this N right here. But where, like, if I look at something like AMD, under is tradable, it says yes. So it's like I can short and go long on AMD. On VTVT, I can't trade it, which is typical for stocks under $5 on TradeNet. Now, to go to the question I really want to answer, how about Amanda Nunes knocking out Cyborg, man? <laughs> like, to go to, like, the real question of today, like, how about Amanda <laughs> Nunes knocking out Cyborg, bro? That was crazy, man. Absolutely crazy, dude. We, um, we need to have a, a John uh, kind of announce, yeah. Yeah, announce the fights. <laughs> I want to hear, forget Joe Rogan. I want to hear John. Right, man. I mean, listen, I it, it's funny because I had my daughter and my wife like in the living room. My wife was falling asleep at this point because it was like 11 something. And so I'm sitting there trying to like pitch my wife. I'm trying to like sell her on like waking up and watching this fight with me. And so I'm like, yeah, they're both champions. One's moving up in weight cat class. And she barely wanted to wake up. I had to like sell her on why she should wake up to watch this fight. And then, like, the fight happened, and it just was over in, like, a minute. And, like, my wife, my daughter, and I were all just like, whoa, like, wow, you know. And uh, it was funny. It was funny. But it was good, man. I was happy to see it. I, I figured Jones would beat uh, Gustafson, and so that wasn't really a shocker. But, it was uh, a quick one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's to be expected, though, Matthew. You know, it's to be expected. Um, Jones is the goat, man. I don't care what anybody says. Like, ha is he probably doing steroids and cycling off of them during yes. his camp? One hundred percent. But uh, he's still probably the goat. Even if he wasn't doing steroids, he would still probably be the goat. So it's like I, I like Jones. I think he's probably the best light heavyweight there's ever been. But I think he's also cycling off of steroids, and so you know, it is what it is. Yeah, crazy, man. It's going to be a big day for uh, kind of the spy to either rebound and continue rebounding or to come right back down. Um, you know, it's hitting the 9 EMA on the daily chart. Um, some some uh, kind of uh, moving average that I use on the daily chart to really kind of tell when stocks are moving back is going to be the 50. The 50 moving average is, is one that's pretty uh, relatively used. I'm looking at a APHA. I mean, that one is moving down some in pre-market. Oh, yeah. So, guys, so yesterday in, in class, yesterday in class, we did some back testing on Todd strategy. Uh, I guess we could call it like, what, the one-minute breakout, opening range breakout of a one-minute candle. The one-minute opening range breakout is probably the best thing to call it. But it was like the gap and crap. It was like looking for overextended gaps and then trading the opposing side of it with that one-minute breakout of that first candle and it worked i mean just in last night's class it got me what let me see 70 percent accurate 77 percent accuracy rate yeah i still have this notepad up i need to save this by the way all right see so range one minute breakouts the opposing side of the gap amd most of these were just on amd Seven successes and two failures with that 77% accuracy rate. So that might be something I'm, I'm going to start uh, looking into as well. Uh, you know, what, what I basically did with it is that I looked at AMD and I looked when AMD gapped up in a big way, I looked on it. On, I looked at the other side of the trade, right? And this is a break even. I'm looking for a big gap. This might be a failure here. Yeah. So this would have been, well, let's see. No, this would have been a success. 
Okay, so like, yeah, like, look, you get a down gap like this, down gap. You get in when it breaks this high, setting a risk of the low of this candle, and you ride it up for the equivalent of this candle. So this candle is from 26 up to 48. Uh, that is 22 cents. And um, you go up another 22 cents, so. To 17.70, which we do would get here, and so yeah, this would have been a follow through too. So it worked. Um, I'm really curious to see how well it does. I gotta back test it some more though, because really, uh, realistically, I only went over one stock in a few weeks of back testing. So I could definitely have to keep going before I actually use the strategy. But in that you know session, it was pretty good results. You know, we also tried back testing. Um, fades and bounces with one prior confirmation move and we didn't get as good of results uh we you know that one didn't look viable as as viable right that's kind of how i i feel about it troy like jones is definitely doing steroids but he's still the goat he's still the best fighter he's been the best light heavyweight at least there's ever been like no argument um I think even if he didn't have steroids, he would still be beating everybody, you know. I think he just uses them for his weight cut and uh, his camp, I guess, in training. But he's still going to have an asterisk next to his name. Yeah, with Jones, man, the thing about Jones is, like, even even though Gustafson is the same height as Jones, Jones has, like, an 84-inch reach. And, like, Gustafson has, like, a 75 or 76-inch reach. So, Gustafson's reach really isn't that impressive. Uh, and that's, Jones can kind of stay on the outside and just kind of pick him apart. All right. I'm going to be watching Tiva again. Tiva's been super reliable with fades and bounces as well. Um, not Friday, but uh, Thursday it looked good. Wednesday too, so I'll, I'll watch Tiva again. But realistically, I'm looking at um, SFET, AMD, APHA, NIO a little bit, uh, NBEV, ACB, uh, TIVA, OPK, and uh, a few other ones. So we'll see what we get. Appreciate the sub, Oscar. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Right, that's exactly my point, though, Isaac, is that... Uh, Jones has like a good build for fighting like he has like an 84 inch reach and so even though Gustafson's the same height as him uh, Jones still has like over half a foot on Gustafson in the reach department and so yeah Watch an AMD APHA. Appreciate the sub, Day Trader. Uh, Leah as well. Yeah, I mean, Jones fought him a little bit differently, though. I mean, uh,. The last fight, Jones didn't really try to take him down as much as he did in this fight. And, you know, he I think he realized that he can't really stay up and strike with Gustafson without get it getting a little risky. Uh, so this fight, he just tried to take him down and do quick work. And Jones was always kind of the best uh, on the ground, you know. Like, when he was kind of climbing the ranks, he would, like, take him down and, like, elbow him in the face. You know, so I think he kind of went back to that, which I think is probably where he's the best at. Uh, yeah, I'm going to look up the news. Let me Give me a second. Let me find my phone. I'll be right back, and we'll look up the news.
I know, you see that, Isaac. I thought about that too, man. It's funny. Uh, yeah, I'll be right back there, guys. I'm going to go grab my phone. We'll start looking some news up. All right, guys, let's look up some news here now. What's up, Eric? What's up, brother? Oh, yeah, Mayweather's fighting um, that guy that he's really like a kickboxer, but Mayweather agreed to fight him only if he didn't kick. So it's like boxing. <laughs> uh Hold on. Let's look up some news real quick. Let's look up the news on SFET. See why this one's moving like it is. Uh, so SF, SFET received an order from the largest Israeli beverage company um, for its SDA and SDE solutions. Uh, so a big order received for SFET. That's one of the things that I'm seeing right now. Uh, yeah, a big order f uh, from a leading food and beverage corporation. So they basically reached an agreement, uh, reached a deal is what that is. Um, so we'll see what happens to it. I can't remember his name. What's up, Ben? What's up, brother? Yeah, maybe a little um, kind of a fluff piece right there. Yeah, man. What's up, Ben? Yeah, man. It's good to be back, too. I thought I honestly thought it was a long weekend, but it wasn't. Like, I didn't think the market was open today. I think I'm probably one of the only people streaming today, too. <laughs> yep, I'm sure. I didn't think it was open, also. I yeah, thought I thought it was, it was closed. closed. Me, too. Yeah. Surprising that the market's open today, really. Yep. A lot of other countries are closed, but not ours. Yeah. Hold it down, Mitch. I'll be right back. Let me see. Let's do it. All right. Looking at the – we'll be watching the spy at the open, guys. Um, expecting this one to kind of do like maybe a false move down to that 549, 31s. We're going to see if it's going to break through there or if it's going to start bouncing and get back above those 250s. If we do get back above 250 – is this 250 40 I can see it you know starting to come back and retrace those levels that we got on a daily chart um, you know we called out this breakdown and the 260s as we saw that consolidation between 260s and 280s and it kept us bouncing once we saw that third bounce in the beginning of uh, December we could we already were looking at those prices to break uh, John and I called this 240 kind of support here and as you can see we went really really fast down to that 240 now I'm expecting a bounce probably about 50% retracement from the last move and um, the reason I do that is just that the overall market has a tendency to do what we call uh, market manipulation essentially um, People start buying down here at the bottom, it goes up and immediately comes right back and touches their stop. Um, you're gonna get that a lot with the overall market as you have an overall range that the stock moves. So one of the real keys is really looking at those daily charts on the overall market and knowing essentially resistance and support. 
Um, it has a tendency to always go off those supports and resistance. So if you use that, you can draw yourself a trading plan and get yourself some good green. Um, yeah, definitely not the, not feeling the best yet, but uh, it's starting to get a little bit better. And here's the bell, guys. Like always, we're not going to push into it right now. We're going to wait a little bit until we start seeing some good momentum. Um, if anybody sees a stock that really tanks out the open, they can go ahead and call it out. Yeah. Um, seeing Tiva go down there a little bit, 1577s, AMD also. Yeah, AMD's dropping. Um, my stock to watch right now is MU. I've been trading it really well. I feel like I've been watching this stock. Every day? Yeah. I've traded it about two or three times now successfully. Um, there's APHA immediately back over six. Yeah, I've been, I'm watching that one too. I'll watch for a reversal on that one. Um, kind of find that resistance there at 615 and then come right back down through the sixes. So we got a NBEV spiking. Yep. Looks like the weed stocks are moving up there. Well, NBEV is. The other ones are kind of, um, <clears throat> at least Cron is kind of uh, sideways. But NBEV spiked up nice. Yeah, Cron's usually a little slower. It's just going to take a second. Yeah. You usually move just after. There's AMD really down there. Yeah, man. See those 18s. It's a tight risk of like 23 or so. Yeah, it went right up to my resistance for MU and then bounced off of it. I have a trend line drawn. See, for me, it's just about what the market does today. Like what? 32.13. There's that SFET showing up on the high day momentum scanner. Yeah, man. And um, one that's looking interesting to me is WPM. Um, another one we should keep on watch, MRIN. I don't um, like AMD when it does this. Oh, sorry. MRI. No, no, it's not too bad. It's slow volume. Yeah, what I was going to say, though, is like when AMD does this, when it has a big up wick here or down wick, I don't like it as much for a fade. And so I think we should probably let the SPY pick a direction because the SPY is kind of choppy right now, too. Uh, I don't know. The SPY is kind of testing the VWAP for like a rejection here. It did kind of what a... It's calling out kind of that rejection up there to the top. Yeah. But yeah, VTVT, SFET are popping up on the scanners, which is kind of to be expected. Those had the two most volume before the bell. So let's see what we get. I just don't like these wicks on AMD. Also, uh, another stock that's moving is uh, B. PR, that's uh, low volume, but definitely came up on the scanner for the gap and crap. Hold on, my wife's calling me. I'll be right back, man. All right, guys, I'm seeing some stocks hold really well here. Kind of not really even uh, getting any down move there. Just kind of holding their levels. AMD kind of getting up to that VWAP. Entry now would be 807s on 815s. It's not too bad on the risk or reward. Profit would be 17 cents, risk eight. Overall market coming back up there. All right, we got MU kind of breaking out of my trend line, wanted to come back up and get slapped back down here. See what goes on here. Um, JOB going off on the high day momentum scanner. Also, VTVT. Their stock's getting a little lift. There's AMD at the VWAP. It's a little bit above it. Need that 9 EMA. 
I don't like it just because the the spy is way too up. Oh, is that Eric here? I thought Eric couldn't trade today. My oh, man's ready. Yeah, man, Eric's here. I think he uh I think he has until New Year's to trade. Oh, he's lucky. Yeah. I know he's happy. It's like it's open. This is yes. last day. All right, I'm back. I figure I'm not going to trade anything in the first five minutes anyway. But, uh, yeah, AMD fading out. <coughs> CGC looks good, though. But that's like I said. Um, we got to let the market pick a direction because right now the, the SPY is bouncing. Yep. I'm going to see if WPM breaks this 1918, heads down to that 19 area. That's when I would look to start tackling it. Um, Kron going up there. Yeah, CGC up there too. Uh, ACB. Look at ACB. Yeah, probably up on the day. Well, it's fading. It's like right at the VWAP tight risk. All uh, right. But it, like I said, the SPY running up like it did, I mean, it might follow through here with ACB. Let's see. What did the SPY do overnight? Uh, it's up. All right, so we could see like a turn back around on the spot. Yep. CGC2. Uh, made that run to resistance. It's now coming back. <laughs> a call on AMD. Uh, what, the uh, fake out? Yeah. Well, you just see that too much volume, I think, in that bottom candle. Yeah. You want to see too, lower volume in that bottom candle down those 1795s. It's all the wicks, man. The wicks tell yeah. you. Like the wicks, it gets pushed down and then back up and then down and back up. I don't trust it as much. Like not enough pressure. Right. ACB might have been good though. ACB kind of catching it right when the spy pulled back a little bit, but it's just about what the spy does here. It never really followed through. NIOs up there as well. Uh, Cat B moving on the day, but not not really much. I'm seeing it now. Just all my gapper scan. Man, look at ACB spike here. Look at that wick. Do you see that wick? I haven't traded this one in a while. It's moving, and it hasn't moved in a long time. AUPH. Oh yeah, I remember AUPH. Do you see? Uh, let me ask you something though. Look at look up ACB. Long traders, long traders. I would check out AUPH. Daily chart looks really cool. Uh, look at a uh, hold on. Look at a ACB real quick. I just want to. I, I want you to tell me if you see this wick right here. I'll check it out on on both because I have both. Yep, I see the wick. Okay. Eight cent wick. Yeah. yeah really? Well, no. It's like a. Yeah, I mean the wick itself is about eight cents, but. Whole candles about ten. Weird, man. Cause it didn't even stay there for like any time at all. Mm. All right, here's the spy pulling back here. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I've been watching WPM, but the only my only problem was I was watching it on a fifteen minute chart. <laughs> I go into the one minute, good. <laughs> and then I I see the VWAP bay just like right there. It's right. Just like, oh. Gotta be quick. Yeah. That 9.35 off the nine, 1940s, yeah, that wasn't a bad pick right there. I see it. That sucks. But it's all good. It was yeah. one of those that I wasn't ready for it. Got to let it go. There's no point. Yeah. Nice, James. Congrats, brother. Good work, man. Nice, Patty. Good work. Oof. Tiva looking interesting. No, oh, yeah, what's Tiva doing? It's not enough fade on there for me to kind of not enough meat on the bone. ACB's following through there. After that big crazy death wick. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean AMD's just down a lot. You know, so it's bound to kind of start moving up here. It's just, just how it is right now. 
It's been trending up though the last uh, let's see last five or six market days. Look, there goes ACB. Look at that. Fall up there. Mm. Wasn't too bad. Just ACB. I just don't know if I would have held through that wick. I probably wouldn't have gotten stopped out though because it never actually stayed up there. It just kind of went up there, stopped people out, and then came back down. It attacked on stops. Yeah. People setting their stops at the high of the day. It just barely taps it and then gets out. I kind of understand that, though. You tra you trade a panic buys, James, right? Like, so I kind of understand it as well. Like, there's certain little conditions that make me not like uh, certain stocks as much. Like I said, AMD this morning, I didn't like these big wicks. And so there's certain little conditions that I look for. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Trading the opposite side with the right knowledge, you can use it to your advantage. Why not? It's something I'm giving I, it for free. Might as well use it. Right. I mean... Tim Sykes always actually talks about that, like the panic, panic buys, right? You look for a big overextended down move on a stock and then buy it on the dip, uh, you know, by the, by the pullback. All right. The spy finally getting back to the VWAP. Looks like we're going to get a little down move at least. And then the poly bounce, but it's starting to get that at least weak, early weakness. We did see a nice drive at the beginning, um, followed by a second test of resistance. Then kind of that turnover right there at 250. We're going to see if this pre-market high is going to hold 249.70. If it gets back below 249.70, we'll start looking for our short positions. Right. Yeah, it, I, the spy's moving down, but something has to set up. I mean, kind of like NIO here, maybe. Maybe NIO. Uh, the only problem is risk-reward. You know, risk is about four cents, small range. Reward is about... Five cents, so one to one. CCCL popping up on the scanners. Uh, BWAP reject op options coming up, guys. You're gonna see a bunch of them in BWAP reject. Uh, seeing MBEV in that sense, Cron in that sense, yeah. ACB in that sense. CGC too. Almost the same kind of chart on every single one. Yep. Pick one that you like the range the best. That's what I always suggest. If you don't like the range of one, then pick the other. If you, if it's too tight on that one, then go with one that's a little bit more open. That's how you adjust your risk and reward. There goes NIO, man. I mean, it was only one to one. I can't be too upset, but yeah. risk reward wasn't there for it. Like I said, I'm looking for the spot to get back below guys that uh, 249. 70 let's see if it gets back below that that's going to show that downward uh trend at least a small term oh, which one the spy oh yeah okay yeah so it needs to break that pre-market kind of high that was just sitting there so it's holding it it's using it as support we want it to break through it oh should see some bounces here Let's see what we get here. UGAZ. Uh, UGAZ is, what is it, an oil ETF, right? Or is it, what is UGAZ? It's Tiva looking better. It's some type of ETF. I can't remember what what the base ETF is. Uh, I want to say oil, maybe? Or, I don't know. Somebody help me out in the chat. All right. I'm going to see if this is going to hold these 70s on the spot, or is it going to break down? Gas. Okay, yeah. I knew it was something like that. Look at OPK, man. I wish we could trade it, but we can't. But it does look terrible if it gets up to uh, 309 or so. 315 risk. All right. I got a flag built on MU. Um, I already got that up one, down one, up two, down two, up three. Now we're going to hold to see if it holds support here. At 32.18. If not, we're looking to see big orders go through there. On the red side. What's your risk going to be? 
Um, I'm not looking to enter in here. I wanted to break down first. And then when it comes back to view app, I'll look for a view app reject. I want to see that complete breakdown. I think um, part of the thing of BWAP rejects, is you can't be early to the move. You need to see the actual pattern break down. And then you need to have the move that we that we have to like uh, see for confirmation, which is the support become resistance. Once that happens, now you have a fully established trade. I think a lot of times when I, I was taking that trade, um, even three, four weeks ago, um, that what was going wrong was not necessarily my entry. It was my timing. Timing is everything in day trading. So if you don't use the right timing, then you usually get yourself into what we call kind of like waiting mode where you're just waiting for your trade to happen. And when you wait for your trade to happen, you're not in this uh, position of strength. Right. Yeah. AKER looks good. So James, to do that, like, so to do that, like Mitch, you go to, this TS, you go to the time and sales button right here and you just click size and like, look, if I drag this over, you can see it a little bit better. Like, look, so I can click size right here and then go to greater than or equal to 2000 shares. And it only shows me those big orders or I can go That's to greater better than now. 5k. And so better now. You just um, go APHA TS. looks good. Um, MU looks good. Cron looks good. If it can get back to the VWAP. Also by ACB. ACB has a nice, nice kind of uh, risk to reward now. I like the way the VWAP's moving on that one. Yeah, for sure. VWAP's pretty tight in there. There you go. Nine cent risk. Now I'm gonna look for a bounce back to 3220s, and then I could risk off of 3230s. Yeah, I don't hate that one. Yeah, we'll see if ACB can get up there. The market's kind of pulling back here, so we should get some. Uh follow through moves with some of these stocks yeah no stress james no worries man <laughs> yeah mitch is looking for that breakdown uh he wants to see a bounce up to what 220s right risk of what 326 is where the trend line is i'm trying to get in uh slightly underneath that 325s and i could risk off of 3230s if not 3235s um, if you want to be a little bit more riskier, but I don't like it. I don't like getting too close to that high of day. So I have a tendency to be a little tighter than high of day. I can expect a small bounce here in the twenties and then a quick turnaround back to the 32s. Um, the real key is going to be the spy. If the spy can get below 24, 44s where it just bounced off of, which is the low. Let's try to get it back down to that 24, 29. So we're gonna see if it's gonna hold VWAP here, hold VWAP at 2474. I'm also looking at, I don't like ACB's risk reward, right? You get an ACB at 519 or so, you gotta set your risk at 528 for nine cents. Then your reward's down here at 507. So it's better than one to one, but not by much. That's the only thing with ACB. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like you could set your risk on that one at 523. I know you got that wake up there, but Above 523, I wouldn't want to hold that one anyways. Yeah, no, it's not bad. I, I seem to like NBEV a little bit more, though. NBEV, better risk-reward, there. Like, if it gets up to 25, uh, your risk can be set at 33. And then, what is that, an 8-cent risk? And then your reward can be down here at 12. So, 8-cent risk versus, what is that, 13-cent reward. So this thing almost, get up there. It just kind of rejected their MU at, at 17 instead of 20s. Yeah, I see that one. Canceling order for right now, guys. Canceling order. Just going to watch what happens. I think I might have missed it just by a couple pennies, but it just didn't get up to the level that I wanted to take it. Tiva had a nice rejection. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Even on that second bounce, that 577 was interesting. Yeah. This is a small range, though. Small range. Yeah. AMD getting kind of in that same area that I was talking about, but I don't like AMD's pattern. It just looks very rangy. Yeah, it's been uh, AMD's actually like usually you know me, I usually love AMD, but the last week in, or two, the fade has not been working on AMD. It's been really really choppy, and so. Right. And what's going on with the spy guys? Exactly what we talked about. It bounced right back to the VWAP. Let's see if it holds that VWAP or if it's going to get back above 80s. Right, let's see if we can 83 to be exact. We'll see if we get a rejection there now. Yep. That's what I'm looking at right now. Yep. 
Yeah, MU wasn't a bad one. Just didn't get to my levels where I would want to get in. And one of the key things is I've been trying to use uh, more of my limit orders and just leave them there and get filled. Um, not push into the market order, get get a bad fill just to get in a stock. Um, if I don't get my fill that I want, I'm just going to continue on trading and look for better setups. Yeah, try doing that, what Eric said, which is close the window and then completely and then reopen it. If not, I can give you another number to contact them. Dex, just email me, brother. All right, we got a flag pattern on APHA. Um, real interesting um, is that the strip getting really tight there at 595. Looks like it can break down 595 and start getting below the BWAP. If it holds 595, I'm going to look to see if it rejects at 602 to break out. On which one? Um, it's going to be APHA. These 595s right here. Look at that VWAP projection on the SPY. Look at that thing, man. Beautiful. Perfect. Like, this is what, like, this is when the ideal time to get in these rejections are. Like, look at this. Spy went right up to the VWAP and then beautifully felt, followed through here with that rejection. And it called it out as, to the key. Yeah. There's APHA kind of looking at what I was just talking about. There's the crack. All right. So now I'm going to look to get in here at 598s, 595s, somewhere in that area. And I could risk off of that 603. All right, so the spy is breaking the lows here. <clears throat> there it goes. Spy just broke the lows. <clears throat> yeah, once we got that confirmation, and maybe should have just taken that 595 from that break right there on APHA. Um, it looked really good. Um, the real question was I was expecting one more bounce to that six, but it wasn't a bad risk to reward there at 595. It'll bounce back. Four. I think it'll bounce back probably. Yeah, it was one of those where. You know, I've been trying to do more of this, let it break down, let it come back, then I can tackle it. Right. I mean, I'm looking for anything to bounce up to the VWAP at this point just because um, the SPY is starting to tank here. So if anything can get back up there while the SPY is doing this, I like a little bit more. It just depends. I think the SPY will bounce and some of these may give us some uh, fade opportunities. Yep. I have an order out for 598 right now, 500 shares. APHA. Yeah, we might What's get up good, Eric. Um, one of the key things is we've been seeing a lot of opening range fake outs. Yeah. That's one part of what uh, John and I talked about on Friday to be a little bit more hesitant in our opening trades, kind of wait for that motion right. to really show us direction and then try to tackle. Yeah, there's been a lot of fake outs in just the market in general, I think. Um, I think that on weeks – like it's been the last few weeks, I think you got to wait for that confirmation in the overall market, like in the SPY, because I think the SPY has been really volatile lately. And so a lot of times that can cause fake outs if the SPY changes directions really quickly. And so I think you need to uh, wait for confirmation move in the SPY and then try to take that side of it is what I would do. I think it was a great uh, kind of uh, call out today on MU and APHA. Just didn't take it on the breakdowns, was looking for the bounce, haven't gotten it. Um, but I think we watched the SPY really well today. And on those moves, those down moves and back to the VWAP and just pushing off of it. Right. Um, now it's gonna be an important to see if we're gonna get volume down here to slap through the 4920s or if we're gonna rebound here. All right, SPY's trying. That double bottom there. I'm expecting some bounces here. Yep. Well, essentially kind of like that triple bottom. AMD getting up to your level on the VWAP. It's not really uh I don't really like it too much, but it's not bad. Yeah, we'll see if MU gets back up there too. But with the market kind of testing those lows, trying to break it, 
I think that this is probably one of the better times to like if it bounces here and some stocks get back up to the VWAP, I think that uh, it may be a good time for a fade. We'll see. What's up, Doji? Doji, dude. Uh, looking at ACB, looking at Cron, NBEV. If they can get up to the VWAP, I like the risk reward. It's just about whether they do or not. <laughs> My mic is low. Test, what, test. What's going on, charts? You having troubles, man? If you having troubles, you can always email us or hit us up. You know, we can try to help you improve on your uh, platform game there. I don't know what's going on with you. But uh, at least for our side, everything is fine. Yeah, I haven't really uh, messed with it too much this morning. I don't, I don't know why test isn't working. It's rejecting your orders. What does it say on the order form at the little gray box? What What does it say? There's two things to check if it's rejecting your orders, Todd. The first thing is whether implement range is clicked. You want to make sure implement range is not clicked. It won't let you put an order through. The other thing is to look to see if you have any open stop orders that were set that you didn't realize and cancel them because it's not going to let you fill another order if one's out. All right, let's see what we get here, brother. Let's see if we're going to get any bounces or just going to go through the floor. Yeah, man. I mean, it's still the spot's still down there. I don't hate Tiva with like a 1580 risk if it gets up to 75 or so. Maybe 83 for like an 8 cent risk. Reward level can be down at uh, 67. About a 1 to 1. One that's interesting for me is BPR. All right, here's, right. A, here's a bounce on the spot. BPR? Yeah, it's just, I got, I got it coming off my gap and crap scanner. Um, just looks kind of like it's going to crash through that 16. But relative risk is tight. You just don't see too much. You got to go on the daily reward. I'll be coming back down to 1560s. Boo, Isaac. Boo, that man. The Saints, are, good. the Saints are about to win the Super Bowl, man. I don't know what y'all are talking about. I mean, uh, I want to put my Boo. hopes up. Look at Tiva. Look at Tiva. There's a little bounce. I just don't like the reward. It's not my type. I don't want to go against... I'm not trying to go after five cents. Tight, tight range. Yeah. It's up to you, bud. Reward is too tight, I think. Yeah, I'm looking for those three to one trades. Yeah. The reward is just too tight. Yeah, as long as I can see that, then I'm willing to take the shot. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it, what I mean by rewards too tight, if you're following along, is that reward level would only reasonably be down to 1568 down here. And then your risk level, so that gives you what, uh, eight cent risk. And then your risk level, and then uh, is going to be up to eighty three. So that's eight cents, and so it's about one to one. So just not what I'm looking for. Um, I don't mind NBEV with a five twenty five risk. <coughs> Sorry for the cough, guys. You're good, man. <clears throat> So yeah, I don't mind NBEV with a five with a five twenty five oh. risk. Looks like the market's getting a little Eight hit six. there. Let's see if the bag buyers buy it all up here. Yeah, so this is about two to one on NBEV if it can get up to five seventeen. Set a risk at five twenty five, reward level down at five oh two. And so that gives you a 15 cent reward with a eight cent risk, about two to one, a little bit less than two to one. But John NBEV moving up. I know. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, 
I know that's what I'm saying. NBEV. Oh, I thought you were talking about another one. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? But no, yeah, that's what I'm saying. NBEV risk of 525, reward level of 1502. And so basically two to one. It's just got to get up there. Bears are not going to beat the Saints. We'll see. I'll be on here in the stream the next day like I told you so. You know, that's all I'm saying. The Saints' problem is consistency. Spy back up to that VWAP. Interesting here. We'll see what the Spy does. All right, I'm back. <laughs> Had a little nose leak there. <laughs> uh, the life. Control middle mouse. Is this like a trick? Okay, that did not work. That popped up some weird stuff. Now I've had these weird numbers on my screen. Uh, I know what he's telling you. It's a, it's a different thing though, but I think you can use it with. We'll have to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I can see I can I can mess with scroll and uh, move it. All right, we got to get it's got to climb up here. The spy is right. kind of rebounding though. I mean, if you look at the spy. The eighty four level. Watch the eighty four level. Let's see it reject off that level and come right back down. If it gets above eighty fours. I'm no longer in short position mode. That 84 is key right there. Oh, yeah, it does do that. Hey, I appreciate it. There you go. Hey, I appreciate it. Uh, appreciate the sub, Jason. Thanks, brother. And XY and Day Trader Fool. Thanks, thanks guys. <laughs> Welcome. Um, yeah, so it'd be getting up there. If it gets up to 516, I'll take it. Uh... A lot of Let's resistance see. above. Let's see if it wants to come up to my order. Putting an order at 518. See if the market makers want to make it move. Spy. Come it up here. Pull it up. Testing that 84 level like you said. It's at 81s. That's the important level. It's funny how it goes right to it. Yeah. But technical analysis doesn't work. They say. Uh, all right. So it's okay if it wicks through it. We just don't want to see the next candle open up above that. If the next candle comes swinging back down and gets back below VWAP, it's still short. We just don't want to see the next candle open up above it. Appreciate it, Dylan. Welcome, man. Appreciate it. Everybody boo Isaac. Yeah. <laughs> Boo that man. All right, MBEV's up there. Almost. Gotta be quicker than that. Gotta be quicker. <laughs> I'm only gonna use 200 shares. I'm not risking it on half days. Um, ooh, MU, MU. All right, now we're getting a big bounce here because the SPY is bouncing. Uh, yep. still it's pretty tight risk really, but it's up to 520s. This is where I wanted to smack it at 518. That would have filled me nice. That would have been a nice one. At least the entry was pretty it's sweet. A tight risk, yeah. yeah I kind of missed the bounce. I'm looking for a little bit more. Ugh. Just got hammered back down. 90. I'm looking at MU also. The spread's three cents. It's going to screw up my risk reward. That's what I'm saying. It needs to bounce a little bit. Looking at ACB still. I mean, I could still take the essentially the same trade with ACB. Another cannabis stock. Man, a little late. Got to be quicker. Got to be quicker than that, man. All right. I see MU right now, 308 off of 3218. Um, I know how important that 3220 level is for the stock. So I'm trying to let it get slightly above 
the VWAP here. So I can use 20 as my limit, as my out. On uh, MBEV, where that previous no, wick was? MBU. Oh. MBU's, the chart looks, looks pretty sweet for me. Yeah, I'm just messing with you, Isaac. Saints are my team, so I got to mess with you a little bit. But yeah, the Bears are good this year. Um, I think they'll do okay. It'll be a good game. We needed that home seat, though. We got that home seat, which was super necessary. Yeah, you guys needed it for sure. All right. Missed NBV. Um, we'll see what the spy does here, but that was the time to get an NBV. We'll see if we get a bounce. If it gets up to 516, I'll take it, but the spread Ooh, is too gnarly. Squeeze for me on uh, MU. Spy bouncing up here. Yes. Yeah, saw 33,000 shares go through there at 3209. Definitely boo Danny right now, man. Roll Tide. That is blasphemous to say in my in my stream, man. That is blasphemous to say to me. <laughs> hey, all I all I gotta say is the knights. The knights gonna handle that LSU business. Get out of here, man. LSU's about to take that, man. Nah, they don't want it, man. Dude, all I'm saying. They don't want Let's it. Let's go Tigers. That's all I'm saying. You know. Oof. Looks like I, I missed that MU entry. Yeah, honestly, NBV is not bad. It's just the, the spread is three cents. It's just going to mess up my risk reward. Yeah. I like it here if it can bounce just a little bit higher. Just a little bit higher if it can get up there. I'll take it. But the spread's too bad right now. Yeah, it's actually a funny story, though. Like, okay, so my dad is from Birmingham, right? Like, my dad is from Birmingham. My grandfather went to Bama, okay? My uncle went to Auburn. And so at my grandmother's house, we literally have a Bama room, we have an LSU room, and we have an Auburn room. Naturally, I root for LSU because I'm from Baton Rouge, but, you know, Oof. holidays are interesting. I know, I'm kind of mad right now about NBEV. Yeah. I mean, I missed on MU, so don't worry. There's two misses there. We saw that rejection at the level of the 85s, but when it squeezed on me, kind of looked a little weird. It looked like there was a big change in the market. There was 30,000 shares that someone jumped in short at the BO9s. Mm -hmm. It hurts, man. Missed it. Barely missed it. If the spread can get better, I'll take it. But that's a big if. Just because I like it because the spy is actually like following through with that right now. So it's like it would have been a good a good trade for NB. AMD's looking interesting. Tiva crash here. Look at Tiva. It followed through as well. Risk reward wasn't there for Tiva though. All right. I'd like to see it kind of curve here and try to the 33s. If not, when it breaks down through the 20s, we'll look for the VWAP reject. Hey, I guess that's good news that if you thought your account was gone, Dex. But yeah, it sounds like a few people are having that problem. Hopefully I don't. And it doesn't mess with me when I'm in the trade. Ugh. NBEV. Sorry to hear that, Troy. Yeah. Nothing worse sucks. than trying to get in a trade and not being able. Yeah, oh, it looks sure. like my 518 on NBEV should have left that order just sit. Don't even remind me, man. I'm watching it as it goes. <laughs> you saw the squeeze. You got close to that risk. Remember, you can always take a trade. If you're going to risk two cents, that's where the risk is. I mean, there's nothing wrong with taking the trade. Yeah. Pay yourself the commission. Stop out if it gets above those two cents. Oh, gross, man. I just drank the wrong coffee. It's oh, so nice. A good old one. Yeah. Ugh, <laughs> that's gross. <man. laughs> I got to I gotta remember to pick my cups up, especially oh, when I'm doing man. this. This is mine from last night's class. That's happened to me before. So At least it's not from last week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. All right. I'm going to look for AMD to come back up here to the 830s, then reject back to the VWAP. Once it comes back to VWAP, I'll go ahead and I'll get short. Off of that 830s. Yeah, I'd be up right now in NBEV, man. That was a nice little follow. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'd be sitting nice at the 518 level. <laughs> Spy looks weak too, Hugh. Yeah, no, I mean, I just saw that reversal. 
you know, after that spike, when it came right back down, you know, I should have, should have held after that, uh, when it broke that 85 and came back down and squeezed up that last time, rejected it. That should have been our signal. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, TrainNet's having issues today. Uh, what's up, Oscar? Oscar says, I'm at work right now trying to soak up all this knowledge to one day start trading myself and make some green. Hello from the Bronx. What's up, brother? Welcome, man. Uh, yeah, man. Okay. Best advice I could give a new trader is just to take it slow, man. Just take it slow and uh, find consistency first before sizing. That's the that's what you need to do. Uh, but, man, there goes MBEV. Yep, this is where I'd be taking profits in MU. My first profits. Couple good trades today, just not snapping on it. A little bit more hesitant, especially with the conditions in the market. Yeah, me too. It's just a half day, volume's typically low. NBEV was the one to make though. Yeah, that was, that was not a bad setup. Tifa followed through really nicely as well. Now let's look at Tiva for risk reward now. Oof, there right. was that BPR. 74 up to 79 can be risk here, and then a reward from 74 down to 67. So that's a seven cent reward, four cent risk, or five cent risk. So better than one to one. All right, we might get some bounces back. The spy is bouncing back to the VWAP here. So we may get some, some uh, follow through moves with some of these. There's that AMD push. Let's see if it rejects up here in the 30s. Level would be 33s, 32s to reject off those levels. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. We'll try and go on AMD. I don't hate Tiva right here with the risk of uh, if you get in at 75, your risk is four cents, your reward seven. Tight range though. And AMD long at 1823. It's not too bad if you hold to the 1820s. Yeah, there's a trend line, bottom trend line right there. Got a really tight wrist now. Oh. All right, let's see this. Re I'm looking for a reject in the 33s. And then a swing right back down to the 20s, and then I could risk off of that 30s. One I don't mind. I don't. Uh, I like Cron if it can get back up to 57, because then you could set a risk of uh, maybe 65. For a uh, eight cent risk and then a reward level down to 37. They're 36 really for a 20 cent reward. So if Kron can get back up there, I don't hate it. Tiva's back up there now. The holds 33s. Spies rebounding the breaking the, the VWAP. Trend line confirming really good on AMD. That's why I'm watching this one. What's up, Jack from Indonesia? Welcome, man. No worries, brother. Happy to have you here, man. All right, there's the spy beautifully rejecting off the VWAP again. Tiva, nice. if I can catch Tiva here before it pulls back, I don't hate it. With like 300 shares. Looking to get short here on AMD. 28s. Maybe a little bit too late for Tiva. Need a little bounce to get filled here on AMD. I don't want to get filled on the bottom side. I want it to bounce just for, just for a second, get me filled. Ugh, there it goes. I mean, I saw this coming with Tiva. The risk, I couldn't justify the risk reward though. But I saw this move happening. Um, like I said, I would have had to get it at 74 for it to be at least one to one. And I just didn't. Didn't catch it. Because I saw the nice little follow through on the spy. 
And so a lot of these stocks should start coming back down. Mm. Oh, wait. So, yeah, somebody said uh, something about Louisiana up here. I was all over Minden, Shreveport, Ruston, Bienville. It's a beautiful place. Yeah, man, I love home, man. I miss my food, though. Uh, I live in Texas now, obviously. Uh, but. John, look at that in AMD. That one was a good one. I just got picky. <laughs> I know Eric's holding it long. Oh. I like that entry if I would have got in there. Yeah, man. There's 25s available to market in or 28 on the ask, and I put it up on the 28. Just didn't get filled. Maybe should have taken that 25. Yeah, I mean, the spy is coming back down, guys. And so, you know, it was a been nice. Right there, AMDs, a good symmetrical triangle. Three resistance tries, fails. Should hold this. And you just took off from that 32.10. Definitely should have taken that one. Two misses. You know, just being hesitant today. Yeah, me too. It's just been, I mean, I've been watching the spy. The spy doesn't look terrible with some of these, but I, I, I didn't catch NBEV. Uh, same thing with Tiva. I saw the move with Tiva happening, and I just didn't catch it. Um, if Tiva gets back up there, Tiva seems to be more reliable if it fades once already, and it had that nice little rejection there for Tiva. So I'm watching that. To see what I'm watching, I'm watching Kron. If Kron can get up to 55, I'll take it because it's a pretty tight risk, big reward. It has to get back up there, which is a pretty big if. Same thing with kind of CGC. I'm watching CGC for the same kind of move. It's a cannabis stock as well. If it can get back up to 31 where the VWAP is, I could set a tight risk of like 55. It's a bigger range, but uh, I, I don't mind that risk area of 55 with the reward level down to the 80s or 90s. Um... Tiva followed through beautifully. Like I said, just didn't catch it, saw it coming. And there's the nice little follow through for Tiva. And it followed through well. So missing the few good opportunities I saw today. I think the spot probably is going to bounce a little bit here, but yeah. missing out. Rick T is Rick P is talking smack to you, uh, Mitch. Damn, those are fighting words, brother. Mitch, how dare you have the flu, bro? How dare you, man? <laughs> yeah, Mitch has the flu right now, man. That's why I'm I'm being sarcastic. If you guys can't tell. Don't do it, bro. Don't do I'm it, bitch. <laughs> Don't do it, bitch. <laughs> okay, no. All right, no. I, stop it. <laughs> All right. People are going to start leaving. <laughs> yeah, no. He's just messing with you, Rick. But uh, Mitch has the flu, man. All right. I mean, he can come clean my boogies. Ugh. All right, let's go back to trading. The stream is taking a dark turn. Uh. Yeah, look at that cron. See if it'll get back up there. I don't know if it ever really will. <laughs> yeah, man, the flu sucks. Last time I had the flu was seven years ago, though, so it's been a while. Yep. It's like, uh, it's going to be one of those missing kind of days. Yeah. What's up, B-Hail? Tiva, man. Tiva's kind of one of them. I mean, I saw it. It was only one-to-one. -one, but catching it on the spy, follow-through would have been nice. ADIL looks interesting, but too low volume. Just the chart looks pretty. Did he really, Oscar? Did he really? Did I miss that? Why? What time is that fight on? That fight was on right now in the morning. I mean, I would have, I wouldn't have ordered it, but. 
I'm just saying. Just wanted to go to a sports bar. Yeah. Yeah, man. Missed my trade there on AMD. Just going to have to let it go now. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm just being really specific with the trades I want to get into. Like, um, only ones I'm thinking about. If Tiva gets back up there, I'll consider it. If Kron gets up there, I'll consider it. And uh, if uh, CGC gets up there, I'll consider it. But those are really the three I'm watching. They got to get back up there to the VWAP, and that's a big if. And so you typically with that, we're going to... Right, for sure. They, he just wanted to get paid, Isaac. I mean, I didn't think anybody really thought he would beat Mayweather. I think if it was kickboxing, he might. But uh, I, I just think that Mayweather's the GOAT. You know? Yeah. At least he, uh, he's still making his money. Oh, yeah, for sure. I like Mayweather. I kind of respect him, you know, just because uh, Vegas, you know. Dude's a beast, man. You know, even I mean, even if he doesn't have the most f fan friendly fighting style, I still like Mayweather. He's the only guy probably drinking Henny before he fights. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Kind of Isaac said, you know, like he uh, not the not the best fighting style, but definitely a skilled boxer. Whoa, not the best fighting style. Mayweather. I mean, Mayweather. You know, it's all defense, and I, I respect it. But it's not the most entertaining. Yeah, no. Best athlete ever to live. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kind of Jeez. agree with you there. Was yeah. he the best pounder? I'm I'm definitely a Roy Jones fan though. I gotta I gotta say that. Like I'm with Isaac on that one. Uh, Hopkins. Uh, Roy Jones though. I'm like, can I come back? Right. Let me reverse time a little bit. <laughs> Let me go back 15 minutes. ACB. Right. Looking like we're gonna. It's probably gonna be a miss for the day. Yeah, I mean, like I said, unless Kron can get back up there, Tiva can get back up there, or CGC can get back up there. Those are really the ones I'm watching. Against the spy, D E R M. Going against the spy here. Yeah, just reach out to Tefs. I don't know. It, it sounds like they're having issues today, is what it yeah. sounds like. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like I said, I don't work for Tefs. So you got to reach out to them. I can give you a number to call them, though, if you can't get in touch with them. But it sounds like they're probably having issues. I'm sure they'll probably make it right if if uh, they had problems today. I'm sure they'll probably make it right. But. All right, Spy bouncing back to the VWAP here. We'll see if we get another rejection here at the VWAP. And with that, we'll see if anything else can bounce back up here. It's AMD. I don't hate Tiva here now. Tiva with a tight risk of like 1580 uh, entry 73, 7 cents, reward level of 60, so 13 cent reward. So just about 2 to 1 reward to risk. I'm going to go kick the can on AMD. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I just saw that VWAP bounce as soon as I turned to it. Right back down. <laughs> I'm kind of scared to try a trade on Tefs with everybody saying it's acting weird. The Rose Bowl is on. I was watching football this early. Whoa. Volume came up a lot. The Rose Bowl? Somebody's got a dethrone Bama, man. <laughs> That's all I'm you saying. Gotta, you gotta take away his coach. I want, yeah, Saban, man. Saban's a beast. People, listen, being from Louisiana, everybody hates Saban with a passion. I actually think Saban is the best football coach, there, or best college football coach. He's the GOAT football coach you can't really dispute that um and he got lsu their championships and so you know people want to hate on him because he went to miami and kind of failed as an nfl coach but uh saban's the goat 
Even if he's against, even if he's the coach of our rivals. Man, it's gonna be one of those stories of misses here. Just gonna probably let it go for the day. And there's still a few viable options if they can get up to the VWAP. All right, Rick, have a good day, brother. But yeah, in order to get the bounce that we need, the spot's got to bounce too. You know, it's, it's one of those things, you know, I don't play the breakdown and the breakdown happens. You know, when you play it, it doesn't happen. It's yeah. one of those things that you just got to back test. Yeah. Be more consistent on. Um, you know, I did see those breakdowns in A and B, um, MU. Uh, saw it in also uh, uh, MBEB. Oh, look at that rejection on MU. I'm just not seeing that. Yeah, that was perfect. Yeah, it's as perfect as it gets, too. So, Amazon, James? I can look at it. I think Amazon is probably going to be kind of trending with the overall spy. Yeah, I mean, it's just trending with the spy, you know. <laughs> um, nice little rejection on Amazon, but kind of doing what the spy is doing. So it just depends on where the market heads. Yeah. Oof, I'm telling you, I wish I could have got that last VWAP bounce on A and B, but just not paying attention to it. What's up, Sid? Good morning, brother. Yeah, look, look at that last bounce on A and B. That's the one, without a doubt, should attack. Twenty rejection. Off of 30s, 30s, 10 cents. You get an instant move down to 18, 18 10s. Uh, with Tiva, I mean, I'm kind of looking at Tiva – it's kind of following the spot to a certain extent. So really, I'm looking at TV to get back up here to 72. Uh, risk level would still have to be at 79 or so. So seven cent risk uh, reward level from 72 down to 60. So a 12 cent reward. So it's still good risk reward for the most part. Not quite one to one, but it's good. Good enough to take, I think. It's just got to get up here to the VWAP and then... You know, it just depends. If the spy continues to tank here at the low of the day, I don't think it's going to balance and give me that entry. But yeah, that AMD rejection was pretty. I know. It's it's, it's so pretty, it's going to make me leave. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those that are so pretty, I just got to get on out of here, guys. There's no reason for me to trade anymore. Um, saw about five different trades that I wouldn't have been viable on. Didn't take them at any of them. And one of the key things that I've noticed as a trader is that if you uh, kind of get into that point where you're kind of missing and being hesitant, um, you miss one, you miss two, you miss three trades, more than likely that fourth trade that you're going to take, you're going to have a little bit more emotions drawn to it as you've been missing. And this time you're going to be a little bit more kind of uh, either balls to the walls or kind of uh, tapping out. And one of the key things is, don't get yourself in an emotional situation before you even enter. If you're already emotional prior to entry, you, that's kind of going to be the stock, a little warning for you guys so you guys can save your money. Um, I've just seen it time in, time out. I miss once, miss twice, and then I go and I chase a trade. And that's going to get you really upset, seeing as you had perfect trades, perfect trade plans, and then you don't take that perfect trade plan and see your kind of your day turn from uh, break even to red. Yep. Yeah, we're talking smack about you in the chat, Mitch. It's all good, Isaac. You're a quitter. Them, you? And a bully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, are you stealing them, you? Oh, hold on. I, I think you wanted to get in. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. <laughs> 
<laughs> we got beef in here, man. But yeah, market. I mean, Tiva. If if Tiva gets back up to the VWAP, it looks a lot better now after this drop. Yeah. And it's just a big if, you know, with for Tiva to do that, I think the spy has to continue to or it has to bounce back some here, which it may. Uh, yeah. But I like yeah. the risk reward on it. Definitely, after this certain amount of time, you know, you see these kind of moves. Um, I feel like the first move of the day is done. You see that move down there on the spy. You got that down move for support, bounce right back down to support. Now you might get that complete trend reversal and complete um, kind of uh, reversal back up. Um, kind of what the spy's been doing time in, time out. You go back, see it on Thursday, kind of did the same thing. Look at Tiva go. Yeah, I'm telling you, we missed already. It's time to go uh, Go watch some, uh, I guess, the Rose Bowl. The Rose Bowl's on right now? I couldn't believe that, but all right. What? Is it really? Isn't that in California? It's like, man, what are they playing? Like 8 a.m.? 3 a.m.? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me see. Well, Google says it's tomorrow at 4 p.m. Oh, looks like somebody was off. Oh, the parade, the parade. The parade's right now? I don't even know they had a parade. Yeah, I didn't know either, honestly. <laughs> I just know football, like, parade, you know. What? Yeah, but it says it's tomorrow at 4 p.m. On ESPN. There goes AMD. Yeah, it's tomorrow at 4 p.m. Central Time. What do you mean they should have give you the money you would have made? Don't stress it, man. One of the key things, if trade net's having issues, and that's just going to happen with any broker. If you're having issues with the broker, start figuring out what happened, figure out the strengths and weakness, and use the strengths. Don't get caught up in the weakness. Um, you know, if something happened today, um, you know, you guys can see our live streams. I think we've had a total of like one or two days in the whole year that trade net wasn't working for us. Yeah. I mean, I think that, I think that each broker will be down sometimes. Like I know Robin hood has been down for a day and had a bunch of problems. I know thinkorswim has too. Uh, so I think it's just kind of a, it's just part of it. Sometimes the brokers are going to be down. Look at the spot crack here. Tiva just continuing down, man. You never got those that. entries. It never bounced back. <laughs> That's what happens. You miss your entry you and kiss them goodbye sometimes. The reason why they were called entries. <laughs> hey, well, welcome, Jack. Hey, glad to have you here, brother. It's just how it goes, you know. You got to learn. You know, if you see your strategy, you like it, you like the risk to reward, like the entry, take the trade. Resist the uh, trigger, and you resist to the trigger, you resist to your strategy, and you're going to go ahead and see some trades go towards your way, some trades go against. Yeah. These all went four, and so, of course, you're going to get a little FOMO, but like I've been bringing up, I think the key here is not uh, focusing on the FOMO, it's focusing on that you do have FOMO. Ugh. And so now is not gonna be the time to try to attack uh, the stock market. And that's why I'm gonna go ahead and just call it a day, guys, call it a year. Not a bad year at all. Um, I had a top streak of 14 days, 14 days green. And gonna go ahead and Start trying to do that again. Look at what. Yeah, last trading day of the year today, man. Yeah. Look at WATT, though. That would look, look bad. <laughs> the overall market. Looking like we're getting into that bear market, man. We have to start learning how to play that bear market. Uh, yeah, Taft actually has a, a smartphone app. I don't know if you people, if uh, if you all realize, Taft does have a, a smartphone app. I figured out how to get it a while back. So maybe try the smartphone app if it's not working. Uh, 
I forget the website you have to log into to access the app, though. Yeah, like I said, only ones I'm really looking at now, CGC, Crom, maybe ACB, and Tiva. If Tiva can get back up there, I'll consider it. It's a pretty big if, though. I doubt it'll really happen. Yeah, Jack, that's kind of exactly the thing that I'm bringing up. One of the key things is understanding if your entry point is your entry point, you shouldn't get kind of subjective with that. Um, stay objective. Know where you want to get in, where you want to get out. Take that trade versus as the emotional trade of just snapping into a trade and realizing you're down a couple more cents than you want to be. And then you can't hold to your risk because you can't accept that amount because the trade's no longer viable. Right. It's kind of like what I just said. Like you want a defined entry level so that you can have a defined risk. If you let your entry vary too much, your risk is going to vary. And so it's like you got to understand if you get in early, you're hurting your risk reward. So like you get in five cents early, your risk and reward is going to be completely different. And so you want to have a very set uh, entry level so that your risk can be very set as well. Yeah, one of the key things we always talk about in our class is at the end of the day, complete trading plans. If you're not taking a complete trading plan on every trade, then you're not setting yourself up for success. You're not going to understand the kind of the virtues of sticking to a risk management strategy. And you're not going to be able to be consistent. You're going to have inconsistent results. Yeah, you might win a lot on one trade, but you probably lose a lot on another. And the reason being is that you're not taking that complete approach, that complete professional trading mentality where you take trades based on risk to reward and not based on FOMO or missing out. Or it looks pretty, you know, you yeah. want to get in like it, it needs to be like Mitch said, like a complete plan. So like before you get into the trade, you want to map out the support and resistance. You want to know where your entry is, where your risk is and where you're going to take profits, where your reward is. And that way you can calculate your ratio and see what your risk reward is and determine whether it's going to be profitable in the long run. Not on this specific trade, but in the long run, if you continue to take that trade over and over and over again, will it be profitable? You know, and that's kind of the goal if because that way, if you give yourself two to one or better on each trade, even if you're just 50 percent accurate, you're still going to be profitable because you're giving yourself way more reward than risk. Um, and that's the goal. And that's how you let probabilities play out in your favor. It's something we always talk about. Man, Tiva just hitting it, man, just getting hit. Telling you, AMD and MU, I think those were really, really nice charts. But we're seeing a lot more of BWAP rejections. Right. And that's just what we're seeing in the market. Honestly, know? that's why I, yesterday for back testing class, I almost wanted to do VWAP rejections because I've been seeing a lot more of those lately. Um, I think that, I think that it has to be a smaller rejection if that makes sense like if if it goes down too much when it comes back it could it, it, it's gonna fail a lot of the time but I think that if it's like a, a small rejection meaning it breaks under the VWAP small push back up and then gets rejected I think it's more viable I think if it breaks really below the VWAP and then has to climb all the way back I think it's a little bit less reliable for the rejection at least in great reads today on the spy at least you know right it might have not traded the best but we definitely called out the spy really well for our chat room it rejecting off those 84 levels you know that's why it's really important to know your levels you know i was watching the stock kind of move down there and if you know the levels you can ex you can kind of see that uh instead of watching every tick you watch the stock approach those levels and reject off those levels that's how you want to be trading. You don't want to be tick watching. A lot of traders have a tendency of watching way too many tick for tick when they're not even in a trade. Kind of just watch the important levels. And when the stock gets to those levels, then you make your kind of tick for tick move. Right. And it's another thing, like Mitch always says, you got to look at the macro levels like you got to look at what the spy is doing like you don't want to try to trade a fade on the spy when it fakes out or when the spy is heading up with like a stock like amd or something like that like you want to make sure like the spy 
is beneficial for the fade too. So like preferably like a bearish move in the SPY can kind of confirm a, a fade or a rejection. But if the SPY is running up big with big volume, you know, you got to be careful. You don't want to get stuck in a trying to trade against the trend, you know. Yeah, Big Hall says we are just going to see more fail failures intraday now that the big bull run is likely over. The bias has clearly flipped to the downside in the market for the first time in a long time. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, market's been looking weak. You know, I'm it should excited. be good for shorters. Yeah, for sure. Bear market. The real key with the bear market is going to be not to fight the trend when the market wants to rebound. Um, yeah. That's what I've been kind of doing my own kind of researching in bear markets and how you really take advantage in bear markets. Um, the real key in bear markets is we're going to have what's called bag holders. The bag holders are going to be the institutional traders and the kind of head firms kind of get in the best overall positions for the long positions. Um, the real key is looking for those rejections off resistance for the overall market. And then when it makes moves to the support, those are probably going to be the best days that you see kind of that that real turn because it rejects off a resistance and known resistance and heads down to a support in a bear market this is going to be really strong and going to go ahead and take down a lot of supports you know if we're going to go ahead and continue down in this bear market i can see 260 holding then getting back down to the 230s Definitely going to see some bag holders as these stocks have come down from great levels like stocks like Apple, Amazon, Facebook, all these stocks that are known to have great revenue, great systems, great rev, uh, product and engine and kind of innovations. Um, those are the ones that people are going to be buying up, setting up their long portfolio for kind of a long term old right and yeah i'm talking to yuri uh, yuri said cccl is up 100 percent. i gave three alerts on this chat 70 percent, 90 percent. now at 100 percent. you guys still looking at the same stocks i'm up 25 yeah. percent uh it's like i said it's nothing against you but people tell me to buy and sell constantly and i can't just listen to random people but the main reason that I, i'm not looking at cccl is because it's not tradable you know i see it on my scanners and i looked at it earlier but it's just not tradable <laughs> for me so there's no point in really uh looking at it vtvt I, as well i can't trade I've that actually one either. Owned, i've actually owned cccl um i shorted it on robin hood one time <laughs> right but i get it i get it you're you know you're just trying to help so i don't think i'm like criticizing you i'm just saying like we can't trade it and uh it's no like, reason to watch it right uh watching cron though if cron gets <laughs> to 1050 i like that 1060 10 cent risk with a 1030 reward level pretty tight there uh I don't hate it. Maybe 62. Maybe it's a little bit reasonable risk. But if it gets up there, it's close. And so I'm definitely watching Kron at this point. ACB too, if it gets up to 510. But Kron's looking a little bit better. Probably going to take small size with this one, though. I'm going to go ahead on out here. Said I wouldn't take any trades anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and take, up, take off, guys. You guys right, have man. a great end of the year. Enjoy your happy New Year's, guys. And we're looking forward to expanding and growing with you guys next year um i got you eric i see that right now i'll go ahead and i'll take a look i'll take a look before i go i got you eric all right you guys have a good end of the year keep trading keep working hard understanding your levels and making those complete trading plans using that risk to reward to take advantage of mathematical kind of advantage and get that profit guys yep yep uh, You'll look for a big 2019 as we uh, kind of take uh, bigger and bigger steps to big sizing. You know, I can see in 2019 getting into those 800,000 shares and, you know, if all goes right, I'm going to probably step on up there. Uh, hopefully by the end of the year in 2019, my goal is to be trading up to size of 2,000 shares. So, yeah, the market's closed tomorrow, brother Sid. So I'll see you all uh, Tuesday. Yep. No, no, no. Uh, Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday. Yep. You guys take care. Later, Have a good one.
Yeah, man, I'm still watching Kron here. I mean, Kron got close. If he can get up to 45, 46, I'll take it uh, with a 60 risk. Got to get up there. Got close. It's up to 42s now. Got to just make a little bit more of a push. But it's got to get there. I'm not going to take it unless it gets up to r really 46. It's trying. Uh, so, Antonio, on the broker we're using, we're using TEFs. Certain stocks are not tradable. Like, you can't trade certain stocks. A lot of times they're cheaper stocks, uh, like specifically stocks under $5. And so on, on TEFs, which is the broker we're using, certain stocks are not in their system. And so we can't trade certain stocks. And so when we say a stock's not tradable, it just means we can't trade it on the broker we're using. There's 44s, 46s. All right, I'm in Kron with 100 shears here. Like I said, tight risk. I'm going to give myself a risk of about 60, maybe 62 or so. Looking for that pullback down. Ideally, 1030s would be nice. We'll see if we get that. Yeah, spy rebounding some here. Overall, it's pretty tight wrist though on Kron. And so I'm not, I don't hate it. But like I said, I'm taking small sizing. I'm not trying to risk it on a half day with low volume. Hey, appreciate, appreciate it, princess. Hey, that's what we do it for. Glad people could find value in us. Yeah, we'll see what Kron gives us. I mean, it's got some resistance at 1050 and, and some also at, let's see what this is, 1055 and then 1060. So it's got some resistance to get over. Um, don't mind the risk. I like the risk in the trade. Very tight risk, bigger reward. You know, you can see my risk is uh, from 1060 or so down to here. And so tight risk. Reward level is down to 1030s at least, so down here. So bigger reward than risk for sure. Yeah, Spies rebounded some here. We'll see what uh, Kron gives us here. Yeah, it's kind of how it goes sometimes, Jason. W-A-T-T. -T. I thought W-A-T-T -T looked like a good fade earlier. Uh, this would have been a nice fade for W-A-T-T -T right here. But uh, too late. It, it just depends now on what it does. I'm looking for 1030s on Kron, like I said. We'll see if we get it. I think my entry was good, though. I got in. Uh, actually, it only filled me at about 44. I guess it's the spread. I was looking for 46, so maybe this, the entry wasn't the best fill but I think it's probably the spread like I said but yeah LSU should be a good game man versus UCF I'm excited for it
All right, there's a little bit of a follow through. I liked my entry, even though I got in filled a little worse. I, I, I like the entry here. Spot pulling back some. It's good for me. Hey, buddy, come here. You want to say hey to everybody? Say hey. Say hey, my name's Jack. You got to say it louder. Hey, my name's Jack. You want to see, I taught my son math. He'll be doing math and he'll be doing, uh, he'll be trading in no time. My son's four. Jack, what's two plus two? Four. So you got to say it louder. Three plus three. Six. What is three plus two? Five. What is three plus four? Seven. What is four plus four? In Spanish. I don't know. You know it in Spanish. What's it in Spanish? Uh, Say it louder. Ocho. Good. What is five plus five? Ten. Five plus four? Nine. In Spanish. Seven. Say it louder. Nueve. Nueve. Good. What about three plus one? Cuatro. Cuatro. Mm -hmm. Good. Good job, bud. Yeah, my son will be trading in no time. Isn't that right, bud? Right. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what we get. It's down to 34s. I'm looking for 30, though, with this one. Yeah, he's pretty good at math for a four-year-old. I mean, he learns. It's kind of memorization. All right, we get 37. Like I said, I'm looking for 30s. Spy broke down, so that should give me a little bit more move, bigger follow-through move. Spot broke down under the lows again. We'll see if it rebounds here. I, I want to see it continue to drop, obviously, because I'm in a short position on Kron. Uh, at this point, though, I'm pretty protected in it. Like, even if it rebounds here, I'll still be fine. Um, got in with small sizing. Going to see if it can uh, continue to head down here for Kron. We'll see. Spy bouncing some here. There's 37s. Good. Six. All right, we're down to thirty sevens here. We'll see if we get a uh, a move. Antonio, uh, yeah, El Sabe un poco, you know. All right, it's back up to 38s. Uh, no, live view. I don't. I don't typically trade crypto. I just don't know enough about it to really trade. Uh, it's just not really my style. Uh, I, I don't know enough about the crypto market to to really do it. It's just one of those things I haven't learned yet. All right, so Thinkorswim's lagging a little bit. It says 39, but it's down to 37s now. Uh, it's looking better for me, but we'll see if the spy continues to break here. And with that, we get a follow-through move on Kron, maybe. Like I said, goal is 30. 
for the first profit at least. I wouldn't mind 30 if it can get down there. All right, Antonio, have a good day, brother. We'll see you uh, Wednesday, hopefully. Yeah, it happens. Uh, yeah, man, we'd have to use the Happy Meal, though, Mitch. You know, got to use the Happy Meal. That's all I can afford, you know. Uh, big nose every day. Every every market day, every uh, every market day, I trade live. Mitch and I both trade live. Uh, Mitch trades Monday, Tuesdays, and Fridays, and I trade uh, every day. Yeah, happy New Year to you as well, Antonio. Appreciate it, man. WFT. But yeah, bitch, if you're listening, like I said, I, I'm not trying to risk it today. Uh, it is a half day in the market with low volume, so I don't really want to take big sizing and risk it. And so I'm just going to take small sizing and just let it work. Uh, I start every morning at 8.40 market time. Jack, 8.40 is when I start every morning. So, um, yeah, we stream live. We typically stream from about... 8.40 market time till about 10.30 market time. Well, not 10.30. Uh, yeah, 10.30, 11 market time. Uh, you know, I'm very, I'm, very, uh, I'm very picky with the setups I get into, Isaac. With AMD, like, the only setups I really like trading are the fades. I like trading fades. Uh, and so if it, if it fades, maybe. Um... If it gets up to 1880 and the spy looks good, I wouldn't mind it for a rejection on AMD, but that's a big if. We'll see if we actually get that or not. What's up, pun? What about him, brother? Uh, the classes, uh, each night they are at 7 p.m. Eastern time uh, every night, but we record each one, and a lot of people don't actually watch them live, like, a lot of people just watch the replay of it, and we post the replay that night, typically, each night in class, and so, uh, it's 7 p.m. Eastern time, but, like I said, we post the replay, and a lot of people just watch the replay if they can't make it to the live one. All right, Kron, getting close, you know, getting close. Spy's kind of hitting the bed, so we'll see if we can uh, get a follow through move for uh, Kron. I like Kron now. I mean, if Kron gets up to 950 or 1050s, I can just get out of it. Very easy trade to follow now. It kind of gave me that risk level to follow. I'll probably let it test 555 or so, or 1055 before trying it. There's 34s. Let's see if we can get down to 30s for me to take that first profit. See, we get a follow through move. The spy's cracking down here. It needs to get down three more cents for me to take that last or that first profit. Like I said, this was kind of the move I was waiting for. Kron got right up there. Very nice entry with that 1050 resistance. And so just needs to get down there a little bit more, down to 30s. Hey, no worries, Pablo. Appreciate the uh, support, man. That's why we do it, brother. So no stress, man. Happy to do it, brother. Oh, yeah, it could definitely go lower. I mean, it can very easily go lower, uh, especially right here at the high of the day. Like if this area holds its resistance right here at 18, 
If 18 holds this resistance, it, it can definitely go lower right here. And so if that area continues to hold and it gets pushed back down, it can definitely go lower. We'll see though. Entry with Kron was good though. I'm glad, I'm happy with my entry because it gives me a very easy trade to follow now. Like if it breaks that high now, I don't want to be in this trade. And so I can just get out for relatively break even. I might be down like $5 if it gets back up there. But obviously the goal is for it to get down to 1030 or so. Spy rebounding some here. We'll just see how much it rebounds. Right. Hey, Eric, same thing I kind of said, man. That $18 resistance. If that area holds and it continues to stay under 18, it looks it looks weak. And so that's the same thing I've been looking. That's the same thing I'm kind of looking at with AMD. Just seeing if it can uh, hold under that resistance at 18. How long have I been trading live for? Uh, what is it, guys? Eric's probably been in here since I started, but about a year now. About a year. There goes AMD getting hit. Yeah, a year on uh, for how long I've kept the stream going. What's up, expatriated? Yeah, about a year, right? About a year. I've had the channel since uh, 2016. I haven't. When I first made this channel, I didn't really post that much, but I've been posting uh, regularly for about a year now, a year and a half maybe. What do you mean, it, Jack? Like what? Uh, what platform? What kind of computer? You know? What do you mean? Ah, uh, yeah, I've been using TradeNet for about a year. About a year. Um, I think I got my first TradeNet account in December. Of last year, so yeah, almost exactly a year. <laughs> Teft's having problems today with some people, Netron. The only thing I got to worry about is like the spy's down so much already. I could see the spy rebounding. And with that, I could see some of these stocks rebounding as well. And so it just depends on how much the spy rebounds and how much the follow through is on Kron and uh, these other ones. And so if the spy rebounds here, which it very well may, uh, it's just about how much and how much uh, Kron follows it. Yeah, no, it's not that, Todd. It's a bunch of people are having problems with it. Yeah, I did start with you stock trade trading live. Yeah, I started trading live with you stock trade in Robinhood. Um, so yeah, it's been over a year. <laughs> Why do you hate Mitch, uh, Isaac? Yeah, see, here's the spy rebound, and so it's just about how much Kron's uh, going to rebound here with the spy. Hopefully, it's not much, but we'll see. Uh, with the spy, it's just about whether this area holds right about up here. Spy coming back down some. <laughs> Yeah, that's why you don't like Mitch, MU.
PCG Netron. Yeah, so now AMD is testing that $18 level that we talked about. If that level continues to hold its resistance, it doesn't look terrible. Um, so it's just about whether that 18 level can hold its resistance for AMD, like we said. I think that's the most obvious resistance level for it here. And so it's testing it now. We'll see what we get. Spy is testing the half dollar of 4850 248.50. Kind of a big res uh, support and resistance level on the spy right now. Kind of breaking down. Let's see what we get. That's right, expatriated. Happy New Year to you as well, brother. Yeah, look at AMD holding nicely though at that $18 level like we said. Really, it's just right now what we're seeing is that we're seeing the SPY uh, pulling back some here. And so uh, it's just about what the SPY does right here. If it continues to test those lows of the day or if it bounces back up. And I think if the SPY bounces, AMD is going to bounce, obviously. And uh, if the SPY fades, it's AMD is going to fade. I do a few options hands on. Uh not not that much, you know. I do a few. In B V at the VWAP now. Yeah, it is. It, NBEV is a little bit too choppy. It's like a very tiny, tiny range with NBEV. That's the only reason I don't like NBEV right now. I'm not saying it's not going to work. I'm just saying it's a really tight range right there. Cron looking noticeably worse for me at this point. But like I said, it really just depends on what the SPY does here. If the SPY continues to pull back down to test those lows, uh, Cron will probably do something similar. Um, it's just about it's testing the half dollar now whether it bounces here whether it continues and so it's just kind of um, what we get here it's push it up watching the spy closer than anything though I, I tend to prefer stocks hands on, but it's all subjective, man. All right, here's 18 tests for uh, AMD. Spy bouncing up to 66, 64s. It just depends on how much the spy bounces here. Like, here's the spy. Now, if the spy pulls back some here, we should get a follow through move with these as well. But it's got to pull back under this 18, this 50 cent level here. There's a pullback. A yeah, big follow through back down on the spot. We should get a big follow through back down for some of these now, specifically AMD probably. Let me see. 
So a big washout on the SPY. We should get the move back down on AMD if the SPY continues to drop, which it very well might. Let's see it. There's the SPY down to the 30s. 20s. There it goes. So the SPY pulled back here. We should get a follow-through move on AMD now, as well as uh, hopefully Cron. Down to the 20s. Spot dropping quick. If it does follow through back down here, it'd give you a nice little double top for Kron as well. Very obvious risk level. We'll see though. Spot continues to still look weak. We should get a move back down on some of these now. Looking at the time and sales on Cron. All right, there goes the SPY down to the teens. There's the moves following through back down for Cron. SPY might be trying to break the low of the day here. Like I said, man, uh, AMD, that level was 18, and it got up to 18.03. It tested it, but it looks better now for sure. We'll just see what the SPY does here, if the SPY breaks the low here and continues to head down or not. Back down to the teens, see if it gets into the tens. 13, 12s. Spy looking weak. Thirteens. Elevens. Let's see if we get a break into the tens here on the spy. The low of the day is 06. So it's at 16, it's got to drop 10 more cents to test that low. But yeah, there's AMD. Down to Just about what the spy does here the spy could very easily bounce right here um at this previous low of the day so it's just about what the spy does if it continues to try to test those lows or not it's going to dictate what happens with the rest of these trades even the one i'm in um and so if the spy continues to drop cron should drop as well and so should amd there it goes spy testing the low just touch the low bounced right back Ah, close, Isaac. Yeah, that's kind of how it goes sometimes, though, man. But I didn't mind the trade idea. Like, Eric and I were kind of on the same page. Like, the big level you want to watch to see if it holds is 18. And uh, it held pretty nice. Yeah, nothing wrong with sticking to your plan, Isaac. No one to stress it. All right, here's the test of the lows again. It just touched... Uh, the low of the day again and then bounce back here's this big test if it breaks here we should get a big follow through there's the test again bouncing back spot bouncing kind of choppiness right now kind of middle of the day on a half day getting some chop
by bouncing here. We should see some of these other ones bounce now as well. It just depends. Uh, the market closes at what? 2 p.m. today? Is that right? I might be wrong. I thought it was 2 p.m. It might be uh, 1 p.m. Let me look it up for you. I can't see it. Does anybody know what day it closes today or what time it closes today? I know it's a half day, I think. Guys might know better than I do. 2 p.m. Okay. All right. Now the spy is bouncing here. The big level to watch is this 248.50 level right here on the spy. See if it holds this level as resistance now. AMD testing 18 again. Now I don't want to see a move back up here. If this move, if it, if this moves over this 21050 level, it's not what I want to see with this type of trade. Um, like I said, very obvious level though. It confirmed it twice. It just looks like an upward trend if it breaks these two highs right here. So I gotta be careful. By testing 20s again. Looks like it's going to pull back down. We'll see if it tests that low at 248 this time. No, Isaac, no. I want the spy to go down. I don't know if it's going to go down more, though. It's kind of extended on the downside, really, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, Isaac. I know, man. You still looking for that 10, uh, that 1805 entry? There we go. Dropping down to the teens again. On the SPY, we'll see if we get a move to that low, that 248 low. It's kind of a big, if you look at the daily chart, it's kind of a big level on the daily chart. It's 248. Right here. It's in the teens. Dropping again. Let's see if we get a low of the day break now. It's kind of battling it out right here, though, on the spot.
Yeah, I don't know what the spot's going to do either. It's so low already. I'm, I'm more inclined to think like what Todd said, which is the closing price or right around there, uh, 248 or so. I'm kind of more inclined to think that it may bounce here just from that previous closing price on the SPY. Um, but we'll see. You never know, <clears throat> especially with the market being as volatile as it has been lately. All right, there's the drop on the SPY. Testing those lows again. Here we go. 03, 02. Let's see if it breaks under 248 the whole dollar. It may bounce right here, though, but obviously you want to see it break. But if it bounces anywhere, it's probably going to be right here. I gotta mess with you, Peter. Of course, nobody knows what the spy is gonna do. Nobody knows what anything's gonna do. It's all speculation. But the spy ended up breaking under 248. We'll see if it follows through here big. Yeah, I mean, the spy is already red. It's been a pretty big red day for the SPY, which is good for me in a short position, uh, especially like Kron's been following the SPY okay as well. So we'll see if we get a bigger follow through down here. It's got a long way to go, though, to get to my levels. Like I said, 30 is where I'm going to try to take profits so if we can get down to 30. But yeah, those were some good fights this weekend, honestly. To try to kill some time, we could talk about MMA. Those were some good fights, man. Uh, Amanda Nunes, shocking. Amanda Nunes knocking out Cyborg. Cyborg looked unbeatable, and so pretty shocking. Why, why'd you put Isaac in timeout, Mitch? Mm -hmm. All right, we're down to 36. Oh. Well, un take him off. Take him off. Sorry, Isaac. It sounds like Mitch's pocket put you in timeout. I don't think he meant to. Here, click it, Mitch, and go to... Oh, I don't know if you can. Sorry, Isaac. It wasn't intentional. Mitch did it on accident. Or did he? You know. All right, we're down to 35s again. 33s, let's get it. Come on, get down there. You got two sets. Let's just get down there a little bit more. If it gets down one more cent, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, you can't undo a timeout. I'm going to get one cent away from taking profits. It's just with the sheer size I'm using, it's got to get down there. We go 33s 32s i'm gonna go ahead and take half off there right around my 30 level missed it by a few cents but 
don't want to sit there and wait in case it bounces here. Especially with how down the SPY is. I'll take a little profit off there. Let the rest of this really work. I'll probably just let the rest go, guys. I uh, got to remember the market closes. It's at 2 p.m. today, right? Spot closes at 2 p.m. today, or the market closes at 2 p.m. today, right? So that would be 1 p.m. my time. So let's look at some time here. But yeah, I'm probably just going to let the rest of this trade ride out. Uh, see see how much I can get. I've taken profits already, so even if it rebounds up here, I can get out for fairly break even. I'm probably just going to go with that. Um, shout out to Trade Ideas. Trade, Ide Trade Ideas is cool enough to uh, let us stream the scans every day. So shout out to Trade Ideas. Let me get them pulled up. So if you're interested in checking out Trade Ideas, which is the scanner I use, you can go through this link and uh, check them out. Shout out to them. I would post, if anybody wants me to post the TradeNet link, I can, but with them being down today, uh, unless somebody needs me to, I'm not going to post it today just because they're down. And So, uh, yeah, let me know if you want me to post the TradeNet link, but if not, I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, but yeah, shout out to Trade Ideas. Go check them out. Uh, let's see. You nice? You want the trade? You want the trade net link? You nice? All right. Hold on. They're having issues today, so just know that. There you go. There's the trade net link there. If you're, if that's what you wanted. You nice. But uh yeah guys, I'm gonna close it down. I'm just gonna let the rest work. If it gets over this high at ten fifty, I'll get out for break even. Uh I'll take it. We'll see what we get. But uh good luck for the rest of the day, guys. Everybody have a happy new year. I hope y'all's 2019 is filled with happiness and success. And uh yeah, we'll see you all uh we'll see you all Wednesday when the market opens back up. Nice, Eric. Good job, brother. Congrats, man. Hey, send me a message on Discord. I'm curious to see what happened, Eric. So send me a message, brother. But yeah, good luck for the rest of the day, guys. We'll see you next year. Have a happy new year. Hope 2019 is filled with happiness and success. And uh, yeah, guys, have a good day. We'll see you all uh, Wednesday.